And we're also here to celebrate Sustainable House Day. That should be a national, uh, not a national, but a national holiday, right? Uh, but it falls on the Sunday, so <laughs> sorry guys, you can't, can't get off. Uh, for Sustainable House Day, it's all about promoting good ideas and also showing people what's possible. And this is what we want to do with tonight. So we saw an opportunity to um, be able to show some of the houses all together, so you guys kind of get the download of information all in one night, and also maybe if you guys were thinking about going out on Sunday, you might be able to see the one you want to check out the most, for that matter. So that is the this Sunday on the 13th of September. Make sure you register online to be able to get the addresses to where you need to go. So a little bit about Pecha Kucha. Um, Pecha Kucha is really a rapid fire sort of way of communicating ideas. So we're really putting all of our presenters to the up to a big challenge today because they got 20 slides and they got 20 seconds for every slide and these slides don't stop, right? So I know I'm trying to mount pressure on them, but they'll be okay. But the really big thing about this whole thing is you gotta be supportive of what they're saying as well. So even though it's gonna be quick and to the point, they're gonna give, some, give us some really good juice and, uh, and we hope you leave today inspired or um, wanting to do uh, more in the realm of uh, sustainability, in, especially in the residential uh, sector. Going into our um, fifth presentation he, uh, uh, is Nathan McGuire. He's actually the homeowner of the house that he'll be talking about, so we really think it's a great perspective um, to bring to the night. So uh, Nathan, he, he was mainly just trying to create a great home for, for his family, and uh, I think um, uh, he said he was inspired by his architect's friends, but he just ran with it, and now he'll be able to share with you the outcome. So we'd just like to welcome Nathan up to the stage. Yeah, as you heard, I'm not an architect, I'm not a designer. So a lot of the things I'll be presenting are just from a, a user's point of view. I, by day, I'm an IT guy, so if anyone's got any computer questions, just <laughs> grab me after. So. We call that house passive resistance, and why do we call it that? So first is hopefully the most obvious, which is the house uses passive heating and cooling methods to maintain a livable environment for our family. Then second, meaning stems from Gandhi, and which describes a non-violent protest. So passive resistance is our house quietly protesting against the current standard of housing. I think, I've, I think I've spoken a bit too quick for the slides. <laughs> just, if you want to just fire any IT questions while we wait. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the previous part of that slide was a target. So my wife and I needed a target. Um, so you hear all the eco, sustainable, passively designed, volume build. So our target we chose was to be energy efficient and that that those previous two bills hopefully show that. Um, now we've got decisions, decisions. So eight years in the planning, every square metre of our house has about four or five decisions. Um, so you'll see we start off quite rough and um, it's phenomenal the amount of detail that's gone into this house. This is the job ain't over once you get the keys. So no matter how good your builder is, you still have to do things once you get in. So there was a fair bit of work and you see not only is it important to get everyone involved but you need to reward the people who help. So there's me with my son having some prawns. That was my father-in-law sitting there with a beer. Um, this one is passive houses need active occupants. Um, this is one of the most important things we would like to, my wife and I who's not here, but to present in that our house People, you see people with uh, shade screens that need to be activated. So we have some high level windows which we manually activate um, in when it's hot. Um, this is designing with energy capture in mind. So the, the solar panels, they were one of the first things that went onto that, that floor plan or that uh, roof plan. Um, and the sketch up, as you probably know, sketch up, you can do shading in July, that sort of thing. Oh, that's skipping a bit too quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was solar panels. This is our in-floor heating. So my recommendation is if you can afford it, put it in. If you're going to have exposed slab, um, we really love it. And it, um, as you can see, we've even heated our shower and our toilet, which was the top right there. Um, so it's actually nice to sit in 
sit on the toilet and have, have warm feet. Um, this is dryer, what dryer? So the original plan had a dryer in our laundry. But as you can see, we haven't really needed to have a dryer. We've used inventive techniques. We've got a lot of northern windows and we, we dry, dry things wherever, they, wherever the sun comes in. This is um, having a space to play. So we really needed a big backyard, two young kids, five and seven. So we've got plenty of room. We've, um, uh, yeah, as you can see, I'll talk about the garden in a, in a moment, but there's plenty of room. And having polished concrete floors, you can see there's a bit of fun on, on those. Our house provides food. So there's poly pipe. There's about 500 metres of 19 mil poly running through our lawn and gardens. Um, and that's all to help water the raised plants as the, the, the lawn, as you can see in the bottom of those images, and, and some fruit trees at the back. <coughs> our house shares with our neighbours. So one of my goals was to plant fruit trees on our nature strip, but the council wouldn't allow that. They wanted me to apply for a development. So I just turned it into a under the radar. His, um, at the moment, if anyone comes, you'll see some more advancement on that. We've um, got some bigger plants in there now. And there was a swing out the front. We don't have a front fence, so the children, uh, the kids around the block, um, around neighbours come and play on the swing. This is um, to be able to measure. So as some presenters have shown, the ability to measure every, oh, every Monday night I, um, yeah, I, I grab the, the data from our house. So there's a, I've developed a massive spreadsheet. So that's also available. For them. So this is spending money on the inside. So the thermal mass argument's been made and, and won. So this is um, using our concrete blocks. And I really, um, <laughs> um, yeah, down, down the spine of our house, we wanted, we, if we have, could have afforded it, we would have had um, um, a concrete block wall down the spine, but we yeah, couldn't afford that. So the next three slides are gratuitous, gratuitous money shots. So they're just for the designers in the room that um, have a look at the elements and what we've introduced. Um, the plywood ceilings are fantastic. We lay in bed with our kids. All the bedrooms have plywood ceilings and we can spot sharks and Ben 10 figurines. And it's like looking at clouds. Yeah, and this is just a, a third of the, the money shot slides. <laughs> so there's the, the courtyard on the left. So we've got some LED lighting up and down, um, uh, polished concrete throughout, all except the bedrooms are polished concrete. So um, the grit, we went to uh, 1200 grit versus the standard 800. So um, this one here is um, improving the soil. So that's we live near the beach, so it's quite bad soil, quite sandy. Um, so I've built my own compost heap, two part, out of the pieces that came from the house, so any leftover timber. And as you probably saw at the end, there was a worm farm that's yeah, all meant to improve the soil in our house. Um, the obligatory rainwater tanks, we wanted to go underground, but that was an extra $24,000. $24, um, yeah, the, the, the house is wrapped in an air cell um, so by a company called Kingspan. So Kingspan air cell <coughs> in, uh, improves the, the fabric by one, one RU. <coughs> Excuse me. This was the timber for our decking. We had a fair bit of timber, and the default timber is kapur, which, as you might know, comes from Indonesian old growth rainforests. So we spent, yeah, it was an extra three and a half grand to get the um, iron, grey iron bark for our decking. Um, this is the last slide, and it shows that from this is from the southern side, looking up at, um, at the back of our house, we've, um, we've got solar panels. There's two rows, totaling four kilowatts. They face north, so we had to jack them up because the roof is minus 10 degrees. And over there on the left was our my two boys in front of the evacuated tubes, which um, do our, our solar. Uh, sorry, domestic hot water. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.